the good old activity indicator. You know that little spinner that spins around on iOS and Android, but somehow it never looked the same on iOS and Android. We try to make it look similar. We try to change the color. We try to change the size. We even have custom activity indicators to replace the default ones. But how do you work with a default activity indicator? And can you in iOS especially? That's what we're looking at in this video. Hey everybody, welcome back. If you're new here, please subscribe to the channel where we do native script tips, tricks, and tutorials. Today we're looking at the good old activity indicator, which is a native script component that comes bundled with native script core modules. This is the one that comes out of the box. And I'm running a native script project here. It's a native script Angular project, but it really doesn't matter if you're using Angular or Vue or core, they're gonna look exactly the same. So this is what it looks like. By the way, this is just the default template. It's running iOS and Android. I'm running simulator side by side here so you can see. All right, now to this page, I'm just gonna add an activity indicator. So activity indicator. So my app is gonna restart, but you don't see it because the activity indicator has a property, an attribute called busy. So we need to set that to true in order for it to actually show up. So let's set busy equals true. And when we look at it now, you'll see that on Android, we have a little spinner there. It's light blue. And on iOS, we also have a little spinner there by default. That's what iOS spinners look like. And everybody knows that and everybody's used to that. So two questions. One, how do we change the color of the spinner? This is a pretty easy one. This is how you do it. We go in here into the activity indicator and we apply the color attribute. Let's say we want it to be red. Now, for a long time, this wasn't possible, but now it is. And that's as simple as that. So now we have a red activity indicator on both iOS and Android. Next question. How do we change the size of the activity indicator? This is where it gets a little hairy. We're going to start from where everybody starts to try to do this. And that's changing the height and width of the activity indicator. So let's do that. I'm going to set the height to be 200 and the width to be 200 as well. Thanks Prettier for reformatting that for me and confusing everybody that's watching. So we have the height and the width right there. And this is what it looks like. Whoa, on Android, we have uh, a winner. So height and width definitely affect us on Android, as you can see. And the activity indicator on Android looks crispy and sharp and clear, it's just bigger, like we wanted it to. On iOS, no such luck. The height and width don't work on iOS. So how do we get the activity indicator bigger on iOS? Well, let me show you. We're going to attach a loaded event to the activity indicator. Loaded is an event that actually gets triggered. It's a lifecycle hook for views in NativeScript. All the views in NativeScript have a loaded event. And we're gonna hook into that. This is, doesn't matter if you're using Vue or Core or Angular. They all have a loaded event. Hook up a loaded event and a handler. So on loaded. And then we're gonna have to implement that in the code. So I'm gonna go back to the code here and I'm gonna create public on loaded. This is gonna get some args of type event data. And as you've seen me do many times in this channel before, I'm gonna call AI, that's going to be our activity indicator, local variable. AI is going to be args.object, and I'm going to cast it as activity indicator. When that native script widget gets loaded on the screen, it's going to trigger that event, that loaded event, and it's going to execute our code. On Android, everything works just like we want. It's fine on Android. So we care only about iOS. So we're going to check to see the iOS condition. So we're going to see if this is running on iOS, and that's going to be if AI, so in other words, if AI even exists and if AI.iOS. So we're going to check to see if AI has an iOS property. So each native script component has an iOS and an Android property. On Android, it's going to have the Android property defined and on iOS, it's going to have the iOS property defined. And AI.iOS is going to be undefined if you're running on Android. So what can we do here? AI.iOS and this has a special property that you can set called activity indicator view style. Now if I hover my mouse over this, it's of type any and also iOS is of type any. However, in TypeScript you see that we have gets the native iOS UI activity indicator view. 
that's the hint right there that you get in TypeScript. And if I click on this, it's gonna go and open up the Apple developer documentation for us. So you can take a look at that. Basically everything is documented, what values you can set there and so on. If we were using native script platform declarations for TypeScript, then you can type all these in the code and you'll have strong typing in TypeScript. I have a video showing you how to do that. You can check that out on this channel as well. Now, what we're gonna set this to is a constant. It's UI activity indicator. Also, if we had native script TypeScript declarations, I wouldn't have to be worried about me mistyping it. So UI activity indicator, view style, white, large. That's a long phrase. Basically, this is a constant and you can see that TypeScript is not happy about it. If we had those declarations installed, this would be just fine. But since we don't, I'm gonna go up here and say declare var, and then put that in there. So now TypeScript won't complain. Let's save this and let's take a look. Okay, so there you go. Notice how that activity indicator is now much larger. It's almost as large as this, that entire cell behind it. And if I remove that code, you can just quickly do a comparison. You'll see that it's much smaller. So there it is, it's really tiny now. This is the default size. And if I activate that code, it'll be the larger size. So by default, iOS allows you to have those two sizes. And that's by design. Now, I'm gonna show you another way that you can get around it, making it even bigger. But I'm gonna give you a warning right now. Making it bigger is going to change a few things. First of all, you're gonna have a negative impact on resolution of that activity indicator on the display. And second, iOS design guidelines want you to use either the small size or the big size. And that's it. They don't want you to mess around and start shrinking and growing this UI indicator. And that's why they made it so difficult to change. So it's a standardized interface and therefore the API is limited. And from a UI perspective, it's generally better to leave these kinds of things alone, especially if it's coming down from Apple. You never know how they're gonna react if they see you messing around with the default activity indicator. The better thing to do than scaling it up would be to just create a custom one and make it look somewhat like the Android one. And I also have a couple of videos showing how to do that in CSS, how to create an activity indicator just using CSS. And it's gonna look large and crispy and sharp. Check that out on this channel as well. Now, if you really, really, really wanted to scale it up still, here's what you can do. Go back to the items component and instead of the loaded event, we're just gonna say scale X equals, let's say four, and then scale Y equals four. What this will do is just basically scale it up by a factor of four, making it four times bigger. And there it is, it's huge. You know what, let's make it eight. That way we'll definitely see the effect. All right, so there it is, scaled by eight. And as you can see, yeah, we scaled it up, but now we have this weird artifact where the resolution is not quite up to par and it doesn't scale well. It's kind of like blowing up an image that's a low resolution image and you get these pixelated edges, which doesn't look good. So there you go. The bottom line is use either the smallest size or the larger size that iOS will let you do and stop messing around. Don't do scaling on activity indicator. It's just not gonna look good. All right, folks, thanks for watching this. If you're not subscribed yet, consider doing that. And I will see you all in the next video.